Here's a practical look at the differences between a map and an object in JavaScript. So to get started, we're just going to instantiate both of them. So we'll say const map is equal to a new map. And the way you set its values initially is you pass in an array and each element in the array is another array where we have the key. So in this case, we'll say one and then the value over here on as the second element in that array. So we can have two and then two. So we'll save that, it will format it, and now let's go instantiate an object. So for an object, we can say obj, and we can just use sort of the literal syntax here, and we'll say one is one, and two is two. Save it like this, and now we can output. So over here on the right, I have it outputting every time I save it. And we can see the difference right here where we have map, so the number one points to the string one, and then with an object, it's converted our number into a string. So that's the first main difference. A key in a map can be anything. It can be a number, it can be a boolean, it can be an object, it can be a string, symbol, whatever you want. A key in an object is much more restricted. It can basically be a string, and if you don't pass it a string, it will try to convert it into a string, like it did here, or it can be a symbol. So if keeping the key as a number is really important to you, you should go reach for a map, because otherwise it's going to be converted to a string. So how do you set a value in a map? You say map.set. It's a function you call where we can pass in the number 3 and then its value over here. With an object, you would say obj, and then you use the square brackets, and we would say 3 is equal to 3, like that. Okay, so how do we get a value out of it? Well, much like a map and how we set a value, how you get a value is you call a function as well. So we'll call get and we'll get the number 3. So over here we can see its value is 3. And with an object, we would say 3 like this. And then we get 3 like that. Okay, deleting. Map also provides a function for that. So we can call map.delete. We're going to delete 3. With an object, you have to use delete map, oops, object at 3 like this. And we can confirm that we've deleted them by pasting this here, and we get the same output as we got originally. Let's delete that. Okay, so what if you wanted to get all of the keys of a map? So a map has a function for that. It's keys. Save that. And what you get back is not an array of the keys like you're maybe used to getting. You actually get something called a map iterator. So if you wanted to map the keys of a map, which is confusing to say, you would actually have to convert this map iterator into an array. And we'll get to that later. So how do you get the keys of an object? Well, objects don't really have functions like this to get the keys. So you have to use object.keys and pass in your object, and that will return them back as an array of keys. Now, remember, it's converted them to, to strings, so the number has been completely lost. The next thing we're going to see is how do you check if a, if a map or an object has a certain key? So in map, it's really easy. There's a function called has, and we can pass in the number, and it will tell us true. For an object, there's not like a super straightforward way. There's um, You can check to see if two is in the object, and that will tell us true. Or another way you can do it is you can say uh, an object has own property two. So why would you have to use has own property? Well, objects come with sort of a bunch of built-in properties, like uh, functions like toString. So this is saying I don't care about sort of those ones that pre-existed. Just check to see if um, I have this my, as my own property, so one of the ones we set. So how do you get all of the values, sort of the, the right side, when you're looking at key-to-value mapping? Well, a map has a function called values. 
So again, we get this map iterator that we would have to convert into a, an array if we wanted to, to call map or filter or, or reduce on it. And with object, we use object.values and we pass in obj. And we get the values here. So another thing that's pretty common when you're working with objects is to get the entries. And entries is basically key pair combos or key value um, pairs. Sorry about that. So a map has one called entries. So we can call that and we get um, the entries where we have 1, 1, 2, 2. And for an object, we would have to say object.entries obj. And then we get an array of the pairs of key value combos. So how do we check how many um, values or, or attributes or keys have we set on a map versus an object? Well, in a map, it's really easy. A map comes with something called size, and that will just tell us we have two. Now, an object, it's a little bit harder. The sort of way I've seen it done is you have to actually get the keys of the object, and then you can call length on the array that you get back when you, when you get the keys. So it's a, it's a little bit more convoluted, but we end up at the same result. So how do you iterate over a map? So another one of the advantages of a map is when you're iterating it over, it keeps the order that you put them in. So it always will give you one first, two second, three third, if you put them in in that order. An object, the order isn't guaranteed. So one way you can iterate over them is just using four. So four will say, const um, entry in map and we'll just console.log what the entry looks like here where did I oh, put this up oh, I messed up that's why it's not of it's it's not in it's of my bad cool so here we get uh, key value as the entry. So if we wanted, we could do key and value, and then we could uh, put this out here. Uh, ironically, this is an object. So here we get key of one, value of one. So if we we're going to do the same thing in um, in an object, we would have to say for const is key value of obj console.log key value. And we should get an error because you can't just iterate over an object in this way. What you would have to do is say object.entries and then iterate over what you get back and see the key here has been converted to, to a string. Cool. So another way you can iterate over uh, a map or an object is using for each. So for that, we would say map.forEach. And we'll say entry and we'll console.log the entry. And one thing that's sort of confusing in this case, at least it confused me, is we got one. So what we're getting when we do for each is actually the value. And the key is the second one. So we could key value like here, but it's it's swapped the order. I guess typically you would be iterating over to get the values, not the keys. So it gives you the value. If you want the key, it's the second one. And then we output this here. So if we want to do the same for an object, we would have to say object.entries for that. And then do for each entry. And then console.log entry. Cool. But if we wanted to put them into key value, we could do key value and then we could do key value and now we get the same sort of thing that we saw above so here's sort of a semi-standard operation well not super common but what happens if you'd want to swap the keys and the values basically take how it is here one points to one two points to two and swap them around we're going to see how to do that using reduce, and you'll get to see some of the differences between maps and objects in the process. So what we'll do is we will say um, map.reduce, and right away it's going to actually give us an error, but we'll just see the error and then we'll work through it. 
So what we get is always the accumulator, and then we will get the key and the value, and we will take that, and what we're going to do is we're going to say the accumulator.set, and the value is now going to be that, and then we'll return the accumulator. So we need to set what its initial value is for the, the accumulator. So we'll just say it's a new map with nothing inside. So map.reduce is not a function. So you can't call reduce directly on a map. What you have to do first is ironically convert it into an array. So we can do that and we can say array.from the map and then iterate over it. And why don't we put the result inside of a variable swap map equals. And for now, we'll just output that. Cool. So what we've ended up with is uh, a string of one, the sort of the word points to one, two points to two. And now let's see how we can do this same thing in an object. So we can say const obj um, swap obj. And this will have to do object.entries for the object. And then we can reduce them. So we have our reduce function and our initial value here will be an empty object. So this will give us the accumulator as the first one and then the key value as the second one. And then what we can do is we can say the accumulator set the value to be the key and then return the accumulator. Now let's output to see what we're dealing with here. Cool. So we've swapped it. Now one points to the string one because that was the key and it had been converted to a string. And both of these can actually be done uh, without sort of the full function body and the separate return statement. You can do it sort of the instant uh, return from an, uh, an arrow function. So what we would do is actually just replace this whole thing with returning just this. Because when you call the, um, the map.set, it will actually return you the map. So we end up with the same one. Now, if you wanted to do this with an object, it's a little bit more complicated. First, you can't just do this because then it thinks you're going to do a function body. You have to do um, parentheses. And then what we're going to have to do is return an object that's a copy of the accumulator. And now because we want to add this new pairing, that's the, the swapped version of it, and it has a dynamic key, we can't just do value is equal to key because this would do literally the string value. So what you have to do instead is put per, uh, square brackets around it, telling it, hey, this key is going to be um, dynamic and now you end up with the same thing. So I would say the the map version is a little bit cleaner than, than copying and dynamic key setting and putting these parentheses here, but we've accomplished the same thing. So hope you enjoyed seeing some of the practical differences of how you work with a map versus how you work with an object. And now um, you can sort of try to make the best call of when you would use one versus the other. If we just wanted a straight sort of dictionary or a hash where you have keys pointing to values, I would actually go for a map. Yet it, it's a little bit easier in a lot of ways to work with an object because JSON gets parsed into objects, uh, not into maps, and you get a few niceties of the, of the language itself. You don't have to always be working with functions. You can sort of use these built-in uh, getters and setters and um, you can create copies using spreads and, and stuff like that. So there's some pros and cons to each. There's also some performance pros and cons to each, but uh, we're not going to get into that now because, at least for me, most of the time I'm not working with millions of keys and values and performance isn't as big of a deal. Hope you enjoyed the video. Take care. Bye.